In today's video, I am doing a pendant speaker install. This requires us running a cable over the red iron, which in this case has been painted white. We're going to use some Gripple Fastlink cable grips to create a loop and have something to hold the speakers up in the air. And at the end of that cable, we actually have a little wire that came with the speaker housing that has three little wires coming off of it and S hooks. And I'll show you that later on in the video. At this point, I'm just getting the cable over the red iron. And here is what the fast links look like. There are entry points on both sides. And it's kind of like a ratcheting piece of equipment. Once you put your cable in, the more you pull it, the tighter it gets. But this is one of those things where you don't want to over tighten because getting those to release is excruciatingly difficult. So you've got to be really careful not to over tighten those fast links. Right now I'm undoing the cable that we ran at the pre-install. You'll see there's two cables and what we're doing is we're running one cable from the amp and the media player and the volume control as a home run out to the first speaker in the zone. The second cable is the daisy chain cable going to the next speaker in the zone. Here is our housing that we're going to put the speaker in and I'm clipping each of these little S hooks into the three holes in the housing. Next thing I have to do is figure out my height and this client's scope of work told me that they wanted the bottom of the speaker housing to be no lower than the bottom of that air duct that you see up in the top left corner. So I'm going to measure all the way to the floor because I measured how far the air duct was to the floor. And so I'm going to measure the bottom of the speaker housing and I'm going to tighten that up and pull that up to that height. This is where the gripples are really nice, the little fast links. You'll be able to just pull on one side and like I said, it's kind of like a ratcheting thing. Maybe a zip tie would be a better way to explain it. So as you pull it, it's just going to pull through that zip tie type grip and just tighten up. And then it won't go in reverse unless you figure out how to <laughs> release it. All right, that height looks about right. Now I'm going to cut off my excess wire just to keep everything nice and tidy. Now it's time to get the speaker mounted up in the housing. This is an active construction site, so I kept that speaker in that bag as long as possible to try to avoid as much dust and grime as I could. On these speakers, there are three different flip-out screws that you'll access from the bottom, and those will actually flip out and then create a spot where it grabs that inside of that housing so that it won't fall down. So all you have to do is basically turn it like you're tightening it, and those little flip-outs will flip and then you just tighten it from there. This will be a lot faster with an electric screwdriver, electric driver, but everything is so lightweight and we're dangling up in the air, it's really hard to get an electric pushed up against those screws because they are tight to tighten. So it really strips out when you're using an electric because you just don't have enough weight pushing down against the screwdriver. So I'm gonna get everything kind of started to where I know that it's hanging on those three flip outs and then I'll be able to get a hold of the housing and get them tightened down a lot easier. All right, so now I know that all three are in place. I tested it to make sure that it was going to hang and now I can actually get a hold of this housing with one hand so I can get the grip and get these things tightened down and it cinched up into the housing. Now I have the speaker nice and snug it's time to do the actual cabling termination. On top of the speaker are the terminations and it's covered by a little metal plate that has a pass-through hole that actually has a cable grip built into it which creates another protection as a fail point. There's the plate, there's the pass-through hole. I've got to loosen that up enough so I can get my two cables to go through the plate. And of course before you do terminations you want to make sure that you put the cable through the plate and you put it the right direction. Ask me how I know. The things you forget about when you're in the middle of a job. All right, so I'm getting my cables ran through that plate and I'm gonna get all my distance figured out. Since we've got white paint and everything is very particularly white, I'm using clear white zip ties to attach the speaker wire 
to the security cable. That way everything kind of blends in. Don't forget the little details like cutting off the zip tie tails. Make everything look nice and tidy. Now at the top of this speaker housing there's a lot of space and this is a perfect place to hide some cable and I always like to leave a service loop either for myself or for a future tech in the event that service needs to be performed on this you want to be able to have some spare cable to work with. You also want to put a zip tie on both sides of the circle so that it can't be pulled through the first zip tie. Now I'm going to equalize my cables and strip them down. One difference between audio video and network cabling is in a network cabling environment you're not stripping down to bare copper you're just getting down to your conductors and then you're punching them down onto a block with a punch tool which actually you know creates the conduction between the wire and the pins in the block. Oh, and always cut off that rip cord. Get that thing out of your way. So I'm going to strip these down to bare copper because we're going to terminate the speaker wires onto screw terminals on the top of the speaker. You don't want to leave a ton of bare copper because if there are little hairs of that copper that are not properly <laughs> fed under that screw terminal, then they're going to touch the other side, which will short out your speakers. If you don't already know what type of system you're installing, you need to either talk to your tech support or look at your documentation to find out if it's a 70 volt or 100 volt system. That's going to determine how you terminate everything on the amp, volume control, and on the speakers. In this case, we're doing a 70 volt system, so our red speaker wire is going to go to the plus terminal where it's marked 70 volt slash 100 volt, and then our black speaker wire is going to go to the negative common. In this photo, I'm only showing one cable coming in, but in this video, I'm actually doing the daisy chain, so there are two wires coming in to each screw terminal. So there are two red conductors on the red screw for the plus, and there are two black conductors on the negative common side. And so by both of those cables being on that same screw terminal, it will create a daisy chain that will pass on to the next speaker in the chain. And you just repeat that process until you get to the last speaker in the chain, which will then look like this to where there's only one set of conductors on each screw. The other wires that you're seeing on the top side of this photo are the actual internal wires for the speaker. Here's a photo of what the top and the cable management looks like. Here's a close-up shot of your Fastlink gripple connections. And here's a shot of what the top of the speaker looks like. So you'll see my service loop coiled up and hidden inside the top of that housing. You'll see the plate attached and you'll see the pass-through tightened down onto those speaker cables. You'll also notice the S-hooks and the three-way cabling that is holding that housing up in the air. And then here's a shot from the bottom that shows after we've attached the grill to the speaker and the finished product. Now you don't want to attach the grill until you've verified that everything's working um, and verified that your tap settings are correct. The tap settings are only accessible from the bottom of the speaker. So I always leave that housing off until I've tested the system and verified that the tap settings are right, you know, that's 70 volt, 100 volt, how many watts, etc. Now I tuck the coil up in the speaker. I hope this helps you to feel a little more comfortable taking speaker install jobs. If you got value out of this, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. And be sure to watch for my following video where I go into installing the amp, the media player, and the volume controls. I think you'll really enjoy that one. That was um, even a challenge for me. So I'm in, really going to enjoy sharing that with you to help you to understand how that works. And as always, let's get you out in the field making money. I'll see you in the next video.